and then we'll have an open mic moment. Woo! 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 All right. My choice. My body. My choice. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Spike. I'm a member of Socialist Alternative Houston. We have a table over there if you guys would like to learn a bit more about us. All right. Abortion people. SB8 allows anti-abortion fanatics to sue anyone aiding an abortion procedure, but very little litigation on what it means to aid or abet an abortion. Evidenced by this law coming into effect. With this law in mind, the outlook for the upcoming Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization case, which will rule on whether states can ban abortions after 15 weeks, looks even more grim. It may be months while this law moves through the courts. In the meantime, it will look like the bulk of SB8 will be in effect. This means for a good amount of time, Roe v. Wade will be overturned. Concerning how Republican governors love to outdo each other, we will see equally evil bills pop up across the country. This makes our reaction, our presence, our demonstration, that much more important. Despite the massive consequences of SB8, few reprodu reproductive rights organizations at all have reacted to this, abor this abortion ban beyond press releases and TikToks expressing frustration. No demonstrations, protests, town halls have been called by any group, including all the conventional liberal pro-choice organizations. All these organizations are dependent on courts, attorneys, and judges to make change. This strategy demobilizes and demoralizes people like you and me, because not just anybody can follow the elaborate, complicated legal system, because only attorneys and judges can decide the fate of SB8. We need a new approach. Biden promised to make Roe law, but has not yet done so. Biden campaigned for president as an unashamed progressive, but has since failed to pass any of his signature bills. No $15 minimum wage, no climate legislation, no new trade union bills, and most importantly, no renewal of federal aid to Planned Parenthood. Unfortunately, there is good reason to be skeptical of the Democrats' recent promises to codify Roe. We need to build an independent workers' party, which unapologetically fights for the policies we need, such as free and legal abortions. This movement has to fight for more than that, though, uh, more than that though, but Medicare for all too. After all, what good is the right to an abortion if you cannot afford or get access to one? Consider the 100 mile away clinics. We need a mass workers party which will call out moderate Democrats who are perfectly happy dangling abortion legislation in our faces to entice voters. We need a party which represents working class people and not the billionaire class. We need a party which will lead on strike actions, protest actions. March again, march actions, and not wait for the courts to decide if we are worthy of basic medical care. Remember, it was a mass movement of workers which strength marched and protested that one row in the first place. And that was during the hated hyper-conservative Nixon administration. Organizing demonstrations, branches, and such is challenging, but it's the best way we, can, we working people have to organize ourselves and to mobilize people to, our, uh, to, mobilize people to create change. I'm sure many of you are wondering how we can continue the fight against the ban and ultimately win free, safe, and legal abortions. If so, come to our virtual meeting on Tuesday at 7.30 over Zoom to find out how we can join the fight. You can get more information about the meeting at a Socialist Alternatives table right there. Uh, I hope everyone here is ready to get organized, stay mad, and thank everyone for coming. Thank you everyone for coming. All right. Parties a todos. My name is Rona Smith, and I'm a member of Houston United Front Against Fascism and Houston Socialist Movement. We'd like to thank Socialist Alternative Houston for calling this demonstration, and we're very glad to join them and all of you here today. The new Texas ban on virtually all abortions is a savage assault on women's reproductive rights. Not just women! Right. You're right, everybody. It threatens not only the freedom of women to control our own bodies, but also our lives. Because history teaches us that many women who need to terminate their pregnancies will try to do so regardless of the law. And in the absence of safe, legal abortions, we are likely to see a repeat of the past. Countless women being maimed or dying from efforts to end their pregnancy. The new Texas abortion ban will be particularly harmful to working class women and women of color who cannot afford to travel to another state 
to access a safe legal procedure there. This horrible new law is anti-woman, anti-worker, and racist. And unless this law is overturned, it will signal a historically unprecedented retreat from the abortion rights achieved through decades of popular struggle. And the repression of women will spread to other states as well. This new effort to end women's freedom to control their own bodies and threaten their health and lives is part of a broader movement by the Republicans. This party has increasingly transformed into a far-right movement. They are committed to rolling back the social and political advances of the past half century and re-establishing reactionary white minority rule in a country that is becoming more demographically diverse, more supportive of progressive causes, and more open to the possibility of socialism. This is why Republican-dominated state legislatures are enacting new laws, not only to outlaw abortions, but also to suppress black and brown votes, criminalize peaceful protests, prohibit anti-racist education, restrict transgender people's rights, and shield killer cops from accountability. There is a name for parties and movements that aim to create a dictatorship, restore a mythical past, and protect capitalism by violently suppressing the left, unions, women, racial and religious groups, and dissidents. That name is fascism. And the threat of fascism is growing in the United States. So in coming out today to oppose the new Texas abortion ban and defend women's freedom to control our own bodies, we are saying loudly and clearly, we will not go back. We will not go back. We will not give up our reproductive rights or let the far-right Republicans threaten our health or our lives. We are also saying that we will stand up and we will stop these other assaults on the precarious but important rights that workers, people of color, women, and democratic-minded people have won through generations of popular struggle. But let's be very clear. We cannot rely on either major political party, politicians, courts, or corporations to defend abortion rights or the other rights that are currently under attack. Nor can we sit back and wait to see what happens. Instead, we must act now to build a mass, militant, multiracial, independent, working class-led movement that can stop the wheels of reaction in their tracks. We must mobilize people to march, protest, and strike. We must mobilize vast numbers of people to engage in civil disobedience and disrupt the economic and political institutions which support or go along with the attack on women and other anti-democratic measures. We must be willing to put our bodies on the line to defeat the growing threat of fascism. And together, we can do this. So. When abortion rights are under attack, what do we do? When abortion rights are under attack, what do we do? When abortion rights are under attack, what do we do? When abortion rights are under attack, what do we do? What do we do? Stand up, fight back. What do we do? Stand up, fight back. Stand up, fight back.
people who had no access to safe and legal abortions. So once Roe was passed, they instilled, they instilled in we their daughters how essential it is to have access to safe and legal abortions. They also did this because they couldn't be a part of that women's movement back in those days, as they were both working class moms, and they knew how essential these services would become. Then, in 2013, my mom and I joined the renewed protest and marches after Wendy Davis' filibuster in the Texas State, State Senate on the passage of State Senate Bill 8. This bill was one of many that are some of the nails in the coffin of Roe v. Wade. Planned Parenthood, now, and the Democrats were there for those marches and protests. But SB 8 passed anyway, and more laws and rulings have passed since then, slowly whittling away our legal access to safe abortion. What have these organ organizations done then? They've asked for more donations. They've told us to go vote for candidates and say that we'll do something, do something to protect our reproductive rights written articles, done television interviews, and not much has changed. Now we're back out here in the streets again, or for the first time as the death knell is tolling for Roe, which was, came into effect in 1973. 48 years. It's been 48 years. That's how long it's taken to destroy our access to reproductive rights. It should just be another kind of mundane medical procedure that should be our own business. The nonprofits and political parties have done what they can or are willing to do since then, and now, yet we're still going back to a pre-1973 world. A world of back alley abortions, black market medical procedures, and so many other unsafe practices to prevent or end an unplanned pregnancy. But we can stop that, just like our mothers and grandmothers did by marching and protesting out on those same streets. We can protect Roe v. Wade and guarantee legal abortions for pregnant people nationwide. But it will require building a mass movement on the same scale as they did in the 60s and 70s, which got us Roe v. Wade in the first place. Roe was won in spite of a conservative Supreme Court and President Richard Nixon. Nixon. Uh, because of the country being rocked by mass mobilization strikes and radical grassroots organizations engaging in direct action. This is what we need today, a movement that will place enormous pressure on the Democrats who control the presidency and Congress to act, and on the Supreme Court who are going to be ruling on another legal case dealing with our reproductive rights. We will also have to put specific pressure on Joe Biden, who a month before winning the presidency made a pledge to make Roe the land law of the land. Two days after being sworn in, he doubled down on this promise to codify Roe v. Wade into law and by ensuring the Democrats would pass legislation at a national level guaranteeing the right to legal abortion. Now as the rubber meets the road and with control of the executive and legislative branches, Joe Biden and the Democrats have no excuse not to make good on this pledge. We need to demand that the Democrats take action and also take care of their many other already unfulfilled promises, like enacting minimum wage, the Green New Deal, the Pro Act, raise the corporate tax rate, or even at a minimum, restore the federal funding to Planned Parenthood. Unless we create a mass movement that will build immense pressure to bear on the Biden administration, we will have to add protecting abortion rights to this already long list. Democratic leadership should do whatever it takes to enact sweeping protections for abortion rights. And they can act now by writing Roe into law. But as we've seen, they'll use any excuse in the book not to act, not to get anything done in order to maintain that status quo. We cannot give them an inch of room to get around this. We need mass protests and walkouts. Walkouts to demand that the Democrats immediately codify Roe. Progressives in Congress should use every bit of leverage that they have to demand the. And on top of this, we need to be prepared for mass action pointed at the Supreme Court as they prepare to make their decision on the Dobbs versus Jackson case. Defend abortion rights. <laughs> We
Women must decide their fate. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. Not the church, not the state. Women must decide their fate. Woo, that is so true. Watch Chingonas de Texas. I'm here standing with my other fellow Chingonas, and we're here also to join the fight and to save the rights, as, the few rights that we have left as women. So thank you guys for letting us be a part of this march with you guys. the march that is against the anti-abortion laws which have been passed in the state of Texas Congress and signed into law by Governor Abbott of Texas. This protest march is going to the courts in the city of Houston. March protest strike! Defend abortion rights! March protest strike! Defend abortion rights! March protest strike! 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 March protest str